Hi, I'm Jane Aldrich, and welcome to another of our Trusted Voices series, a production of Relaunch Greater Lansing. And the goal is to communicate accurate, timely, and science-based information about COVID vaccines in the hopes of encouraging people to receive the vaccine in the coming weeks. And today, I'm really happy to talk with Mike Savmera. He is president of NYWAVE in Lansing, and it's good to see you, Mike. Thanks, Jane. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to be here and excited about the topic. So. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. You know, we're all kind of curious how you have been with your approach and communicating information about the vaccine to your team members. How have you gone about doing that? Yeah, I, this is an interesting one because I, I think in the past, what we would do is have what we call all hands meetings, pulling everybody together and having a discussion. Um, 70 people in a room today, guess what? You can't do it. I mean, it's just... Uh, <laughs> right. If in COVID, you're not going to do that. So what we've done out of the gate was we uh, have a weekly uh, email that actually I put together that updates the company on everything going on, including usually there's a piece on what's happening with COVID, how we're dealing with it. Um, and lately, it's been more about the vaccine. So sure. that's one way to do it. But I'll tell you the thing that's been most effective for me and for our leadership team is one-on-one -on -one conversations because people don't want to they don't want to raise their hand and and say hey um and talk in front of four or five people or, or people in their department they would rather talk I mean, we have an alley behind our our school building here and that's where i end up having a lot of our conversations hmm. people will catch me or i'll catch them and they will explain what their concerns are and we can at least have a discussion about how they deal with those um, and that information then moves through our company that that person will say, yeah, I just talked to Mike and he was suggesting that I do this or suggesting that I talk to so-and-so. That's helped more than anything for us. Yeah. Well, is the company requiring everyone to get vaccinated? No, we're not. So we spent a lot of time, our leadership team talked about that. Uh, and we decided that too much of this is, is personal with the individual. We are encouraging everyone to get the vaccine. Um, but also encouraging them to talk with their primary care physician, talk with those trusted advisors that they have in their lives about, um, because some people, there, there are situations where some people are not going to be able to, vac to be vaccinated. Um, exactly. I don't want to lose a good person because um, I say, you must be vaccinated or you can't come in the door. Right. Right. Um, so we're working it as on all of the different angles that we can to make it as safe as possible. For and as personalized, it sounds like. But have you, have you what kind of concerns have you heard from some of your team members about not getting the vaccine? Yeah, so probably the biggest one comes back to the, boy, they pushed this through so quickly. There, there's there's got to be something wrong with it. There's got to, you know, I don't want to be the first one that goes and takes it. That's probably the number one thing that comes across. So helping people understand that there was basically this um, structure of vaccine development that was already in place, that they were able to develop this. So it did cut out much of the path of a normal vaccine mm -hmm. made a lot quicker on top of billions of dollars going into it at the same time. So helping people understand some of those pieces, I think is that's helped. Yeah. Um, but that is the, the one item that I hear most out of people here um, other than the uh, off the wall comments about, you know, that Bill Gates will know where I am once I have this vaccine in me yeah. and some of those right. um, yeah. just the garbage that's out there that people struggle with reading that and understanding what's what's real and what's not. Exactly. Or Dolly Parton contracting, <laughs> <laughs> which which I'm OK with that, frankly, because I'm a big Dolly fan. So I'm good with that. But but I understand in all seriousness. Yeah. I got it. Well, you know, I understand too that NIOWA's mission uh, is to cure cancer and save lives. Yes. And listen, lives are on the line with this pandemic. What do you think the biggest challenge is moving forward, Mike? Yeah, it's with us being in the medical field already um, and trying to understand what's how we can have an impact on any of this. Mm -hmm. The thing that I've struggled with as we've gone down this path is. I put it in two categories, leadership and education. Um, as I see us trying to pull people together to say, hey, this, this isn't a political thing about whether you get vaccinated or not, or whether you are for the vaccine. This is something for us to pull together as a community, as, as a country, 
and us to get things back to, they're not going to be normal. I don't think they're going to be, but back to what is the new normal in a way that we can all be operating and be much more effective than we are today, where we're all working in kind of our, our own little worlds and not connecting with people in any way, shape or form other than in this media. And you can't connect the same way that you can sit across the table from somebody and truly collaborate. So the big hurdle to me, leadership and education and leadership demonstrating that we have a path, we have a plan, and then helping people to weed through a lot of the, the noise to say, here are the things that you should be thinking about when you're thinking about being vaccinated, when you're thinking about going back to work, when you're thinking about how you should be living in this community moving forward. That's what I think. All right. Well, I have to ask, I'm going to ask everybody I've talked to about this. Did you get the vaccine? I did get the vaccine. So I got my first shot actually a couple of weeks ago. I'm uh, in uh, team Moderna, I guess, is what my son says, because he got Moderna also. So um, and I get my second shot uh, April 12th. So I'm excited about that. And uh, it, it's one of those that it was a pretty simple process. I didn't have any sort of um, reaction. So it went pretty simple there and probably the easiest shot I've ever gotten because it was mm -hmm. a very um, fine needle. So that part made it pretty easy too. So. Yeah. yeah, and I, I did as well. And I've actually received both of my Pfizer's and um, I had a little minor reaction, but I mean, certainly it wasn't anything awful and I knew what was happening. So um, I have that sense kind of of just real hope, <laughs> which, which I haven't had in a long time to tell you the truth of the last year, Mike. So it's been, it's wonderful. So congratulations on getting your one and you're almost, almost ready for number two. That's super. Yes. After all we have been through and I use the word hope there, are you hopeful? Uh, extremely hopeful. I, I, I actually had um, one of the things, the silver linings to this whole pandemic I have gotten, my, all my kids are out of college and they're working. Well, they were all working remotely and uh, they actually were working. We have a place over in Grand Haven and two of them were working out of there for a good chunk of the past year. So I've gotten a lot of time with my kids in that situation. Listening to them talk about how they're approaching this and how their friends are approaching this. Um, because in some of the other states you're having people, I mean, my son down in New Orleans, he's already gotten his first shot. And it, the people he's working with Again, the people in their 20s, some of them are, you know, you, you hear stories that none of them are going to get vaccinated and they don't feel they need. That's not what I'm hearing. I'm hearing 20 something saying it's my job. It's my duty to get vaccinated. And I need to hearing some of that. That gets me excited about where this is headed and that we've got some folks that are uh, they're, they're They're in this and we're in this together, which is great. That's the case. We are absolutely. Mike Samara, president of Nile Wave, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Jimmy. I really yeah. appreciate this. Thank you for doing it. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you, everyone watching Trusted Voices. I'm Jane Aldrich.